Hey everyone, this is Josh back with Cardboard Chronicles and today I have two guests with me. The first time I'm doing a three-way interview and one of my guests is a former professional NFL player and current coach for the New England Patriots, Gerard Mayo. How's it going, Gerard? Doing well, Josh. Thanks for having me. And I'm also joined by Andy, a uh, recent collector on Instagram, Fifth Down Sports Cards. He's been picking up some monsters lately, so I'm excited to have Andy on as well. How you doing, man? Doing great, Josh. Thank you. So uh, we'll just get started. Andy, why don't you start us off? Tell us about yourself and your uh, background in the hobby. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm now 42 and have four kids, and uh, I've been collecting since as long as I can remember uh, as a five- or six-year-old going to a little corner candy store with my mother near my grandmother's house and getting packs of cards, and uh, I'm very proud that I still have all those cards today. (laughs) Same question to you, Gerard. Yeah, you know, just like Andy, uh, I've been collecting for a long time. Started when I was young and then, you know, super interested in sports cards. Then came the Pokemon cards and anything that was collectible, anything that was rare that I could get my hands on. I loved it. Uh, and then, you know, when my athletic career started taking off, I kind of stepped away a little bit. And uh, and recently, you know, over the last couple of years, Andy and I have been doing a lot of, a lot of card collecting. And uh, it's, it's been great. It's a great hobby. The Pokemon's interesting. That's actually where I got started. Tell us about the how you got started with Pokemon. Yeah, you know, just uh, I don't know how I got started in Pokemon. Just always been a fan. Um, you know, seeing them evolve. You know, when you pull that Charizard or that holographic or that Squirtle. You know, I was I was a big fan just seeing the evolution of the actual Pokemon. And then you know, every once in a while, you get that Mewtwo, and it's like you know, it's, it's the feeling you would get when you would pull a Mewtwo. And I know I'm probably geeking out a little bit. Yeah, I hear for you guys, but uh, you can't really describe the feeling. I'm surprised there's not more guys into Pokemon, especially like I'm a similar age as you, Gerard. So I'm I'm surprised there's not more guys into Pokemon because that was that was huge, you know, in the late '90s when we were younger. Oh, it was huge! It was huge. Do you remember Pogs? I used to collect Pogs as well, and you know, anytime you know, I think you know the thing that really gets me is just the rarity of some of these things. Whether we're talking about sports cars or Pokemon cars or Pogs, Slammers, all that stuff. The rarity is what really, is what really gets me excited. Yeah, Andy, when did you start like really getting more involved in the cards and picking up bigger stuff? So I always liked it, and like Gerard, um, well, unlike Gerard, I didn't have a distraction of a professional sport, but I had other things going on. And then um, what my oldest son, who's now about to be sixteen, which is sort of crazy to me, he was getting to the age of I'll call it five or six years old, and um, it just started to we started to watch sports together and he started to root for the home teams and um i just thought it would be extraordinarily fun to uh re-engage with him and uh we actually developed this first spreadsheet of the target guys that we were going to go after which i still have and it's absolutely hilarious but um so that is obviously now 11 years ago and i think my intention was to get him going but i got myself going i guess yeah it's funny to hear I always hear Gary Vee talk about when he's talking about cards, he's talking about kind of the reboot era. And what he what he means is like guys like us, we were really into this as kids. And then as we get older and we get more money, we have kids and then we want to get our kids into it. So it kind of like, you know, re-energizes us to get back into it kind of hardcore. And then we find ourselves like doing it for ourselves a little bit at this point. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a really special thing. And, um, you know, as, as a dad, uh, with, with your kids, first of all, you know, in today's day and age, you can watch, you know, any team, any, any state, any country for that matter. So you can collect guys who, you know, growing up when I was a kid, I could never watch. So that's a great thing. And also I think it teaches them a lot of other aspects like, you know, organizing and sorting and tracking and all sorts of other things. And, um, and I would say it's uh, it's a very fun legalized gambling as well because, uh, you know, things can happen and go great and things can happen and go not so great. Yeah, absolutely. So, Drod, I, I have to ask about just like collecting as an athlete. Like what do, you, what do your teammates think of it? And just kind of like what does it mean as an athlete to collect, especially given that you're on these cards? Like what, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. You know, I, I will say uh, a lot of my teammates don't even know that I collect. Um, a lot of people don't know what I have. You know, I try to keep a lot of this stuff under wraps, like not really big, you know, as far as putting out what I have out there. But uh, some people know, um, you know, from an athlete's perspective, we started out as fans. 
right? So always, yeah. a, I grew up a fan of Jerry Rice, grew up a fan of Barry Sanders, grew up a fan of Bo Jackson. And, you know, as soon as you make it to the league, it's not like that goes away. You know, I still look up to those guys. Uh, I still look up to, you know, I, I looked up to Tom Brady. I played with Brady. We're in the same locker room, in the same captain's meetings. Yet, you know, I grew up watching this guy play. And so if you get, you know, you pick up a rare Tom Brady card, I mean, he doesn't even know if I have a rare Tom Brady card. So I wouldn't have those conversations. Like, I just got your card because I feel like it probably would creep, uh, creep people out. Um, but it, it's, it's great. You know, it's great. And it's great to have the means to be able to get some of these rare cards. Uh, and, you know, I'll, I'll always be a fan. I'll always be a collector. Do you think more of the guys would get into it if you showed it to them? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know, a lot of these guys, um, you know, they're into different things. And, you know, right now, I will say this, you know, like you look at the Jordan documentary and when, you know, things like that come out, all the interest is there. Everyone's like, you know, love Jordan. Now everyone's trying to get a Jordan card. And now you've seen the values of those Jordan cards double over the last, you know, couple of months and anticipation to the documentary. And now, you know, the quarantine, I, you know, honestly, it's kind of like, it's a blessing and a curse, you know, but I, I will say that people are sitting back watching, they were looking forward to watching the next episodes, right? And so that, uh, that actually drives up the value of some of these cards. And it's not all about just the value of the cards, I would say the awareness of, uh, you know, Jordan's greatness, you know, being able to sit back with my kids and watch Jordan and those Bulls teams, I mean, it's been great. Yeah. Um, Andy, obviously, you know, we, we talk on Instagram a lot. I know you pretty well. Uh, so how do you, how does your relationship with the athletes as it pertains to cards, how does that work? Is it something that you're actively pursuing, trying to get some athletes into cards or is it just kind of like you, you found some guys who had that similar interest? Well, uh, I would say it's more of the latter. Uh, Gerard is just a great friend. We do a lot of great things together. Uh, we personally enjoy each other's company, dinners, social activities, things like that. Um, one thing I think is less known about Gerard is just how smart and how versatile he is in business and all sorts of things. And uh, he's a guy when he gets into something, he goes deep and things like that. And um, I think just there was so much dimension to the cards and he as he explained he was already sort of he comes with the background and, and passion already and when i shared with him some of the things that i was seeing and enjoying um as as he would say let me get some so uh we just decided we'd partner on a few and uh yeah. and quite frankly he has the midas touch so um i'm very good with that because i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure Gerard, you found that like with a lot of these cards it's it's a lot about who you know and like where to find the stuff and not not as much like you know just having the money right oh absolutely you know access and just the ability to be able to find some of these rare cards that's the challenge and you know i i, I want to kind of go back you know i'm standing on the shoulders of a giant right so andy i mean he's very humble uh but as far as when it comes to cards i mean there's no one better in my opinion uh, he's been great as far as the access and just the not his knowledge, uh, his knowledge base is just, uh, immense. Absolutely. Yeah. There's some, I've had some big time guys on this channel, but these are, these are two of the big, the biggest collectors I've had. So I'm pretty excited about this. Um, so why don't you guys start talking about what kind of cards you're into? Andy, why don't you start and tell us like what, what kind of cards you focus on, what sports, you know, what, what kind of like value of cards you're looking for, things like that. So I am literally what I'll coin as a hoarder. I, I definitely have, I guess, uh, you know, having an addiction and having a hoarding problem is not that bad when it comes to it. It's uh, output being sports cards. So um, it's something on one hand, uh, it, I need a control on the other hand, uh, all kidding aside, it's, it's really fun. And honestly, it's, it's migrated over time. And every year or two, I might find something new and interesting to get into. Um, you know, when I was first sort of reinvigorated and in getting into it, I just went off my eye appeal. I went off things that really, um, you know, caught caught my fancy. And then um, I some focused on some specific guys, some that ended up to be great and some not so great. But in the last few years, I think, as as you know, Josh, I really collected, I collected a lot of the Prism Golds, for example. I thought that they were really cool and interesting and obviously limited to 10. And I thought they were very good looking cards. Um, I also got into the nineties inserts, a bunch of people that I really like on a personal level were into them. And that's really why I got into it was because I liked the conversation with those people. And um, more recently uh, I 
got a bug, a logo man bug. And so um, I guess w the, the bug came is that when I went to rare and rare and rare, ultimately those are the rarest and being one of one, um, you know, that, that became very fun and exciting. And what's also interesting is uh, the, most of the people that have the logo men, they're never going anywhere. And so, um, you know, finding them and, uh, and getting a few has been fun. And, and thankfully Gerard agreed with that, uh, vision. What about, what about you, Gerard? What kind of cards are you focused on and most interested in? Yeah. You know, really cool looking cards, you know, to kind of piggyback on what Andy was talking about, you know, uh, for a minute there, we're getting, you know, the jambalaya sets. Those are really cool looking cards. And I have some, some cool cards here uh, to share with you guys today. But, you know, and just people that I'm a fan of, you know, not only as an athlete, but also as a person. You think about guys like LeBron, you think about Kobe uh, in the football world, you think about Barry Sanders and Jerry Rice, just guys that I am a fan of. And, uh, and the rarity, you know, we talked about this before, but just rare cards. I, I just enjoy that stuff. Yeah, for sure. I have to ask about Tom Brady. You know, that question is probably coming. Do, what's it like being around him? And and what is it like for you seeing, and not necessarily as it pertains to cards, but just like knowing how much his card value is and just how much, you know, you you uh, can kind of see why they're so expensive because you're, 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 you've been around him so much and you, you understand that like there's a reason that he's so valuable, right? He's a legend. Uh, yeah, look, I'm not around him anymore. He took a trip down south, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tom's a, a great guy. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I never looked at Tom and was like, "Wow, this is why your cards cost so much." <laughs> 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 but he's a great guy, and uh, what he's been able to accomplish, what the Patriots as an organization have been able to accomplish, uh, has been an unmatched. You know, you look across. Uh, any sport, honestly, not trying to toot my own horn, you know, but at the same time, you know, it's an organization thing. Uh, we always talk about team and Tom would say the same thing. You know, Tom, it's all about the team. Um, but, you know, going back to Tom as a person and you know, how that how that correlates with his card value. <laughs> I mean, I guess he's a great person. So his cards cost a lot, but you know, we can say the same about others. His cards are very expensive. Oh, for sure. Um, I want to touch on how you guys are talking about how you, you went after kind of the eye appeal. Cause I think there's a lot going on right now with people looking to just kind of invest in cards and jumping in, not really knowing what would you say to those people, you know, trying to help them as it, as it relates to buying what you like and buying things that appeal to you and, and you'll, you'll kind of get the value out of it that way. Well, it's funny. Like, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of directions people are taking now. I, I like it all. I like the fact that people are doing different things because one thing is for sure is that even what we'll call the mass market, you know, the, the cards that have higher print runs, they're still super rare in terms of supply and demand in terms of what's available to the world and where it's, where it's all going. And I think it's just terrific. And, um, you know, so if somebody wants to have a certain play for a certain reason and people like Gerard and I want to play something else, uh, I, I think it's what makes it so interesting. Um, you were asking before some of the things that we focus on, you know, you can focus on teams, you can focus on players, you can focus on a sport, you can focus on if you like a certain type of card, a prism or an optic or back in the day, some of the exquisites and, or, um, vintage cards. So I, I I'm not one that knocks um, anybody's passion or desire. And, and um, I think it's great. And I also think it's great that a lot of people are finding financial success with it. Um, it's nothing but helpful for, um, you know, to, to encourage more people to participate. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of everything right now. There's just a lot of new people. Are, are you, are you encountering a lot of new people draw as you kind of get more in, into sports cards or there, what do you think of the community so far? Uh, I think, honestly, you know, I'm in the same camp with Andy. You know, I think the attention, uh, I think it's great. You know, a lot of people look at the values of these cards and, you know, some of these cards, of course, astronomical value. But the good thing about cards, there are so many different levels. You can play wherever you want to play. Right. So my brother wants to get into cards. Of course, he loves the athletes, but he's also looking at it through his investment lens, right? Is this a good investment? But you don't have to go get a $1,000 card hoping that it'll be a $2,000 card, $2, card here in the next couple of years. You can go get a $50 card and now it's a $100 card. You still, you know, you still doubled your money. So, yeah, I think it's great. I think the attention is great. Um, 
you know, I don't knock anyone trying to get in here just for investment. I think it's great for the, for the hobby. Hold on, Gerard. We, we, we can make fun of Duran for a second because we have a, <laughs> we, we, we have a, a WhatsApp channel with us three where it's, it's called Cards. And the, there's only two people on it that actually do cards. And there's one that's been <laughs> research. And he's been researching for like three years. Meanwhile, yes. you know, um, m- meanwhile, he's missing out. But that's okay. It's hard to pull the trigger out of the first thing he buys, man. It's really hard. Especially with like, you see the prices going, keep going up and you think, oh, I'll just wait for it to come down. And then, you know, a week later it's doubled and you're like, I missed that opportunity. <laughs> Yeah. But you look at stocks the same way, right? You look at stocks the same way. It's like, you know what? I'm going to buy this stock tomorrow. And then the next thing you know, it's up 10%. You're like, you know what? It's too late to get it. It's the exact same thing. So that's how I look at it. Do you think that we are just seeing the beginning of this, Gerard, especially with like people being more and more connected to sports you know, in America and, and all around the world? People really, uh, in this country especially, love sports. And we just we want to feel more connected to the athletes. The sports cards thing kind of feels like, a great transition, a great transition for people into, you know, the next phase of like fantasy football or all these other ways for that people connect to sports and athletes. How do you feel about that? I absolutely agree. And I think the globalization of sports in general, you look at some of these basketball cards, you know, what they're doing over in Asia, over in China. Uh, I think we're in the very early innings, as crazy as it sounds, right? Because, you know, this hobby has been around forever, but I still think we're in the early innings of this thing. And uh, I look forward to seeing where it goes. You know, my son, you know, my kids are into this stuff early. Now, so this is like, this is going to come back around again. Is it cyclical? Probably, but we'll, we'll see. But I think uh, in the near term, at least it's here, here, here to stay. And you guys are just having fun with it, right? Like, it's just, it's a blast. I can speak from, from personal experience that it's just, it's just a fun hobby, right? It's a it's a great hobby. And, you know, the thing about it, even opening packs, you know, as, as you know, you really don't have a chance to pull a lot of these rare gems out of packs. But just the excitement of just tearing a pack open, just hoping that hope that you pull some a monster out of there. I mean, that feeling is, sec- is second to none. You know, Josh, what's what's interesting, though, is um, it, it, I'll, I'll make an analogy here for you, though. Amazon went public. The market cap of the company was like five hundred million dollars. And. You know, everybody constantly is feeling like it's so big, it's so big. Well, with cards, I haven't done the exact math and no one can know exactly, but I think if you add the dollar amount of every single card together, you probably get less than $5 billion. And that is effectively about the same value of the uh, Gerard's football team, you know, the Patriots value. One sport, one league, you know, uh, so on and so forth. And so when, when I think about the size of the market versus other things that, um, I'm involved with, uh, I certainly feel that it, while it feels large compared to where it was a, a year ago, two years ago, I, I really believe it's at its infancy. And actually as an investor, it's something that I'm very comfortable to have a very significant allocation to. And I've had guests on, I've talked to Brent from PWCC and he was talking, he always talks about how, you know, the market cap of cards compared to coins and art is still like so much lower. Like even coins, I think coins is like 5 billion and, or 10 billion or something and, and cards is like three to 4 billion. So it's like those, those types of things are, are more for the older generation and our younger generation coming in is more attached to sports cards. So I just like, I just don't see how it doesn't keep growing, you know? But let's let's look at that. First of all, he's doing great things, and I think he's doing some things that are going to get more people involved. But I have four children, and if and three of them are really into sports. I just coins and stamps, you know, it, it's great and it's terrific. But I think the uh, kids, uh, you're going to have more connectivity to cards because it's sports, and so it's exciting, it's interesting, it's interactive, it's tied into things going on every day on their phones, on the TVs. Um, so I, I just think that it should be far larger. Sure, I agree. Let's show some cards. Uh, Draw. do you want to start us off? Just whatever whatever you want to show and whatever pace you want to go at. Ah, perfect. So I'll start off showing my own cards, okay? Show my own cards. Uh, so this is a one-of-one rookie. Hold on, let me, uh, sorry about that. That Andy actually got me for my birthday. Okay, one one. Hey, Gerard, get the, <laughs> get the label down so people can see the top of it. It's on the card. See the show the label. Can you see uh, it? Little glare. I can't see it really. So this is a one of one rookie of yourself. Yeah, of myself. Hold on. Let me move this over. Hold on. Hold on. I want you guys to see this card. Hold on. 
Can you see it? Yeah, but put it down so you can see the label and read the label. Down more. It's up. Down. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. Uh, still a glare. But read, us, glare a, read us what it says at the top. 2008 Topps Chrome Super uh, Super Fractors TC 246. Gerard Mayo 9.5. Centering 9. Edges <laughs> 10. Corners 9.5. Surface 9.5. So what's it like owning a card of yourself, especially like, you know, potentially the best card of yourself? Yeah, it, it's uh, it's great. And that was a great gift, great gift for Mandy. Uh, you know, it's good. You know, usually they give you like a bag of cards. They give you a bag of your own cards every year, but they won't give you a card like that, right? Yeah. So uh, it's great to get. It was great. It was a great gift. Did you sign cards? Yeah. So, yeah. So when you uh, when you're a rookie, okay, they just – give you all these labels you sign the labels and they slap them on the card so so at the time were you like were you into cards when you were a rookie did you uh you know at my rookie year honestly so i was rookie of the year that year and i was focused on football <laughs> i wasn't focused on collecting i was just focused on football you know you come into a locker room where you know the year before they they won every game but one which was the super bowl you know in 2008 and it's like you know I got to come in and make an impact. How do you make an impact on a team like that? You know, you look you look around the room, you know, Teddy Bruschi, Randy Moss, Wes Welker, you know, all of these guys, Rodney Harrison, Julius Seau, you go in there, it's not really, it, it's everything, you know, it's all about football. It's all about football. Yeah, business. Uh, yeah, keep going. Uh, keep going. We'll, we'll ping pong it back and forth. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll do one of you. Do you have any other cards of yourself, Gerard? I do, I do. You, got, you, I got, actually, you have one, you're one with the auto. There you go. Printing plate, printing plate right here. There we go. Let me read the back of this card. Let me read the back of this card to you guys, though. Led the, so led the SEC in tackles, highest ta uh, highest total by SEC player since 1990. Yada yada yada. But I love this printing plate. Love that. Yeah. That's great. All right, Andy. All right, what you got, Andy? What do I got? So I, I guess I'll start with. Um, it's actually one that I got recently. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll show it and then I'll describe it. I'll take it out of the plastic. This is, um, I, I think it's a very cool card. It's, um, it's a 2003-2004 Kobe Bryant emblems of endorsement um, out of 15. <laughs> and um, it's, uh, it's a very special set. Josh, you probably know about the set. You don't see these cards very often. It is out of 15, but... Um, there's only two that I've ever seen, um, this being one of the two. And I know that they're uh, not seen by many because there's some people that are looking for it as part of a set. So, um, you know, with Kobe's passing and um, what he did for the game, what he was doing off the court, um, I've been very focused on getting a bunch of his um, most rare cards just because I, I – you know, obviously what he did on the court, but I think what he was doing it, you know, in his final days was, um, you know, means a lot. He was as a, he was a father of four, um, like, like myself and like Gerard. Um, so it is, there's, there's a lot of connection that comes with a card like this. This will never leave my collection. Um, and I did also, and I don't have it here because it's in the vault of PWCC, but I also recently got that Kobe Bryant PMG green, um, which was a very exciting pickup for us. Pretty big card. <laughs> yeah, I was very excited to get it. Yeah, that's a uh, that's an amazing card. Uh, I've had a guest on that has that uh, one as well. Grant, that's a great card. Uh, draw yeah, back to yeah. you, man. How can I top something like that, man? Look, I'll stay in the football world. Um, <laughs> you know, I think honestly, I think football cards are still underrated. I know there's a lot of attention on basketball cards, but the '90 inserts football cards have always been sick. But I'll show uh, one of my favorite players. Jerry Rice, you guys see that? Yes. Jerry Rice, okay. PMG Green, only no, seven. That, that, of one's, these. that one's the Skybox. That oh, one's oh, sorry. Yeah, credentials. That's credentials. Credentials. Oh, credentials. Sorry about that. Well, here you go. What's that one number? Rare card. Rare card. Uh, seven out of seven. Number seven. Uh, let me talk about Jerry as a player. You talk about a guy who came from nothing. You know, I always love the stories of these guys who, you know, they have great stories, came from nothing. You, you, I'm sure you've heard the story of him catching bricks, you know, in the backyard, uh, softest hands in football. 
Uh, you, you think about that offense, that West Coast offense, how how smooth those guys were out on the field. Uh, I've always been a huge Jerry Rice fan. And I, and I grew up an Oakland Raider fan. You think about that. Uh, and I'm from Virginia. So it's all, I'm all over the place. Uh, but Jerry was one of a kind as far as uh, you know, a person who revolutionized that position. I, I also think football cards are wildly undervalued. Just, just as a side note, just because like this country is like, ravenous for football like people love it here and i know that basketball is more global but it just feels like football has a lot of room to catch to catch up to it and there's a lot of a lot of room for growth there absolutely andy you yeah. Got something ready? yeah i got something ready so this one is um is a real uh pretty card um it's it's one that aesthetically i think is just absolutely spectacular um it's a kevin durant limited logos um uh, out of out of fifty, and um, these have a uh, the the nine point five tens are, are population of three. What was interesting about this card? There's two things. I wanted to talk about Kevin Durant for a second, and it, it goes to sometimes things happen with cards that are um, lock and sometimes unlock. And uh, you know, uh, I think one thing to point out about this card before I forget is realize when having it that it's his New Jersey number too. So I think that was cool that it's his. Uh, the jersey number they transitioned to number seven of 50 but you know he was just lighting it up as we all know in, in uh, golden state his card started to explode um but he was going to win another title and then all of a sudden he had that freakish injury and you know a lot of people were buying in heavily to his cards and i was one of them and and uh sometimes things don't go your way sometimes an injury you know can happen and that's the reality of cards and so well, his card values technically haven't been where they they probably be double if, if he didn't get injured and and um, win the championship. But th- this card is beautiful. I think that he, as a player, is an extremely undervalued card. Um, so I I focus a lot on his um, on his cards. There's been a lot of attention to his refractors recently. Um, I I think that a lot of other ones, SP Authentics, the Ultimates, and and a lot of these other ones are just very special cards. Absolutely. Seems like everyone's rookie refractors and base cards have been going up crazy lately. It's just a matter of time before the other stuff catches up. All right, Drod, back to you. All right, back to me. I'm going to stay in football. One of the greatest running backs to ever play. I know his, his career was cut short. You know, he kind of just walked away from the game, probably had some more left in the tank. I'm going to go with my guy, Barry. You guys see that? Yep. Barry Sanders. 50 of these may, super rare. Uh, So glad to have the opportunity to get one. One of my favorite players. Not only, you know, watching them on on, uh, Sundays, but playing with them on, you know, in video games and stuff like that. We've all played with Barry in the video games. uh, But the PMG, I mean, sick card. Look at the way it looks. PMG gold. I love that you got all the '90s stuff. That's that's kind of that's where I got started was '90s basketball. So I love the '90s stuff. It's just it's great. Uh, absolutely. It's absolutely. so hard to find. So I guess we're heating up a little bit. Um, yeah, keep so, bump it up a level if you got to. Yeah. So take it up. Take it up. Take it up. So back to um, you know, back to the the focus that we said on logo man. So um, I, I tried to get a third uh, person to join us today wasn't able to, but, um, I did pick, we, we did pick up. Um, so let me, before, let me properly introduce this. So 2003 exquisite came out, uh, with an absolutely stunning set. And, um, we've seen, um, a, a fabulous collector, Nat Turner post a lot of really special cards that he got out of that set, including two of the three, um, logo men exquisites that are just, incredible cards um no surprise that nat was able to get them um the next year in 2004 what's interesting is is they um they made the autos for the duels for the first time and then additionally they had a subset i think there was only 10 of of the triples so um of the duels the first two that i want to show are someone that i've known a long time since he was a celtic um ray allen so He's, um, I'll talk about this for a second. So it's Ray on, on the left and, and Michael Red, who is absolutely a terrific player as well. And then the other one is, um, you know, he, he's with a guy named Robert Swift that I actually had never heard of, to be honest with you. So, 
So um, Ray has two logo men cards, one of ones. Um, and so I got both. The other thing that I, I, um, I think was pretty funny about this, out of all of the um, dual logo mans that were signed, Ray was the only player that used black ink. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to figure out why that was. I don't have, remember signing him. <laughs> I don't have any answers yet, so I don't want to make it up. But it, yeah, I've actually noticed that I, he's like the only guy I've seen where his autos have like the thicker black marker versus the blue. You know? Yeah. So at any rate, um, these were great. Um, so uh, I guess Gerard, back to you. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, transition over to basketball with you, and I'll go with a uh, triple. Triple logo, man. You guys see that? You got to back it up a little, Dry. You get a glare when you put them close. Angle it down a little bit. There you go. Right there. All yep. right. KD, KD, Brandon Roy, and CP3. All right. So super rare card. Look, KD, I honestly love this guy as a player. Love him as a person and what he's doing. You, you know, you talk about outside of basketball. Uh, an investor, you know, starting up all these companies. I think, you know, I'm a huge fan of Katie, not only as a player, but, uh, but as a person. Uh, this is really, I think this might be the only Katie logo man exquisite rookie that I've seen. I haven't, I mean, you may have seen one. I haven't, uh, but I love this card. And these logo mans are basically like myths, you know, they're because there's only one. And if right. so, the person that owns it doesn't want to show it, then we don't know it exists, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. That's a fan cards, like cards like this, like honestly, grades don't matter. You know, just love the rarity of the card. Uh, it's, it's great. Absolutely. So, uh, I'll, I'll stick to the triple theme, Gerard. You got me going with something, so I'll stick to that. This one uh, was so cool. Um, back to the 2004 set. So, again, back to 2003, there's only a few guys that had a logo man of anything, and it was um, LeBron, Kobe, and MJ, I think. Is that right, Josh? Yeah. I don't know if there's any others. So 2004 was the first year that they would have an exquisite logo man if it wasn't those three. Well, um, two of the, two of the, all three of the guys on this card were unbelievable. But Shaq and Tim Duncan, um, this is their first exquisite logo man that happens to be um, on the same card. Can you see that? Is that yeah. clear? Yeah. I mean, in the middle is not a slouch either, Yao Ming. So – um, I, I think that that card is just um, incredible. Uh, a beautiful card. Um, yeah, it's flawless. So uh, Tim Duncan, uh, Shaq, the amount of titles they won, the dominance they had, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a great one. Yeah, it's got a, a really nice market for cards, especially with the you know connection to China, obviously. Yeah. All right, Drod. All right, sir. Keep it going. Actually, yeah, I have I have one more to show. One more to show. Rod, before you go to that, I got one. I got one more, and then you'll go to that one. All right. All right. So there's one more because I got one, then you have one that I've been on. Um, so, uh, in, in the back to the 2004, the logo man theme. We're going to stand up for a second, um, and back to the conversation on Kobe. So Kobe has one um, with. Uh, LeBron, so obviously that's a very attractive card. Don't have that one. But the other one that Kobe's on, I do have, and that's with Lamar Odom. And uh, um, so I think it's very cool to have two Lakers on the same card. I also think it's cool to have um, one of Kobe's first two logo men uh, from Exquisite. So um, <clears throat> having this, the emblems and the PMG green are kind of the cornerstone now of my Kobe collection. Um, so very excited to have this. The 04 is so cool just because, you know, everyone talks about 03, but 04 has that autographed logo, man, which is like a very unique addition to the set. So it's it's really awesome. I love that stuff. All right. So, Josh, I'm just going to give you the backstory. So I get a call from Andy, and I'm going to let Andy talk about the car, but I get a call from Andy like, hey, we have a once-in-a-lifetime once opportunity. Once in a lifetime. And it goes back to what we talked about earlier and just access to cards. And Andy has tremendous access in this arena. So huge fan. I'm a huge fan of LeBron. Okay. Huge fan of LeBron. Can you guys see that? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> so, Andy, I'll, I'll let Andy do the honors with this one. Back it up a little, Gerard. Back it up. A, yeah. Okay. There you go. Talk yeah. us through it. Yeah. Talk us through it. Talk <laughs> us through it, Andy. <laughs> um. Well, first of all, we had the opportunity to have one of LeBron and one of Kobe. 
So that was um, a great opportunity. But if Gerard turns around and looks at that, we both have seen that card. Um, the the it, it looks like it's freshly pulled out of a pack. Oh, absolutely. It, it bright blue ink, just gorgeous. But again, back to O three, there weren't autographs on the logo men, so um, he has the one with Kobe, with MJ, and with Carmelo. Um, obviously, the first two are in a different stratosphere in terms of value, but obviously an exceptional uh, logo man to have a LeBron. You're getting the, the raw reaction from a LeBron collector right here. It's like, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen anything like that. <laughs> Incredible. That's an awesome card, man. Thank you. All right, Andy, you going to finish it off? Yeah, are you, is that what we're doing? Are we closing it out? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so uh, one last one. I guess we'll just stick on the Logo Man theme and we'll go triples. Um, you know, as Gerard said, uh, this uh, this Michael Jordan re- reemergence has been extraordinary. And what's amazing is, you know, I grew up watching him. I actually went to the game with the Celtics where, you know, he scored the 63 points. Um, and uh, he just... I can't believe watching him again. I, I really think that um, he is just uh, a once in a lifetime type of player. I can't do that him versus LeBron or anything like that. I'm, I'm not into that, but um, clearly there's never going to be another Michael Jordan. So they have um, him and LeBron have, um, they, they have two logo men triples that they're on together. And one is, with Kobe in the middle. So this is obviously not that, but this is with Carmelo. And uh, I don't know if you can see the whole card. Um, is that it? Is that in the mm-hmm. screen? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's good. So, um, yeah, the card kind of speaks for itself. A logo man with um, with LeBron and, and, and MJ. Um, I, I, I think by my estimation, it's it's probably the number four logo man that they have. I, I think Nats in, in the 2004 um, duel with LeBron and, and MJ, and then um, this triple with Kobe in the middle. I would all put those clearly ahead of this one, but I don't think that one after that tops this. So um, it's uh, it's pretty spectacular. And the other thing, I don't know if you can see, but you can see the Red Bulls in MJ's jersey yeah. uh, is on the edges there. It's very cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Johnny, we're going to give that to this to you for having the show. Um, we really appreciate it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll take the uh, super fracture at this point. That, that's a cool <laughs> Well, these, these are like different stratosphere cards, guys. Unreal stuff. So I pre- appreciate you sharing. I have one question, and it's the same one for each of you. So we'll start with uh, Andy. Uh, where do you see yourself going next with cards? What's kind of your, your future with cards and, you know, not necessarily you know, where you think the market's going, but for you personally, where do you, where do you want to go with cards? Well, what we didn't talk about today was um, the people, the people in the cards and, uh, you know, there's different types of people in all walks of life and there's a mixed bag with everything. But I've got to say that the people that I have met, in cards are some of the best people that I've ever come across. Um, I've met people like you, um, people like uh, Mike Kantz, uh, who's known as MC Sports Cards, Eric Fitz, Buy Nice Cards, Trey Guzman, um, uh, Jameson Long from Exquisite Sports Collectibles, uh, Adam Rowe from Breakers Row, um, uh, Matt Shine, uh, just some spectacular people. I can go on and on. Terry Boyd from Big Boyd Sports Cards. You know, having an outlet of my day where it's work and where there's kids, where I can just focus on cards, I mean, it seems like a blessing. So um, I intend, I mean, there's two ways to think about it. I intend to continue to grow my collection um, significantly over time because I think, first of all, it's the smart thing to do. Um, I believe in it. I have fun with it. And, um, uh, you know, I let it take take me where, where it's taking me. I don't know. I don't have exact, um, you know, path... Uh, ironed out but um i just i'm looking forward to years to come and i as i said i think it's just the beginning absolutely same same question to you drug yeah you know I, i've met people you know kind of piggybacking on the people i've met people that i would never have a conversation with probably and you know we would never cross paths at, in anything else you know uh people who collect cards come from all walks of life and 
it's been it's been truly great to really get back into the hobby over the last few years. Um, I'm going to continue to collect. Uh, I don't I don't just go out there and try to get a thousand cards. I'm more of a sniper when it comes to this stuff. And when a great opportunity kind of presents itself, uh, I, I kind of pull the trigger. So I'll continue to collect and continue to hold these cards just because uh, I love to do it. Start showing some of your teammates. I think they'll. I think they'll like it. Show some of your <laughs> one of the guys on the team. <laughs> yeah, maybe. One, I'm sure they'll see it after watching this. So. <laughs> yeah, send them, just send them the video to this, and, and then start sending them my way, and we'll we'll get them all collected. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys spending the time with me today. This has been awesome. Uh, any final thoughts from from either of you? No, I, I just go ahead, right. Andy. Sorry. I think you're doing a great thing, Josh. I think the the show is great. I've enjoyed watching all the the past guests and um and i would encourage anybody that's coming into it to um you know get to know some of the people that collect and develop relationships and friendships and i think it um it can be rewarding and uh lucrative and fun and anything you want it to be yeah josh and i just uh, i appreciate you having us on today i'm sure we'll we'll cross paths again here soon so thank you rare cards we always cross paths <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Josh. Bye-bye.